So the first question I have for you guys is, what, what is a spiritual discipline? Do you guys have any idea what a spiritual discipline is? Like, what comes to mind? Spiritual discipline. It's like, oftentimes I think when you hear the word discipline, it's kind of like, oh, one that time, right? It's time to get in trouble. But that's not really what spiritual disciplines are. Um, to give a, like, an official definition to what spiritual discipline is, Spiritual disciplines are practices that are found in Scripture that promote spiritual growth among believers in the Gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's kind of long, so I'll kind of shorten it down for you guys. Spiritual disciplines are practices that are found in the Bible that help us grow spiritually. Okay, So that's what spiritual disciplines are. And so when we talk about spiritual disciplines, keep that in mind. That it's something that we do that helps promote spiritual growth. Um, and helps us in our walk with Christ. And so just to give a couple of examples of what actual spiritual disciplines are, um, they're praying, Sabbath, which is resting, um, fasting, silence and solitude, um, reading the scripture, and these are just a short list of what spiritual practices are. So to give you guys a little bit of a tangible idea of what spiritual practices are. And so the purpose of spiritual disciplines if done correctly, if done with the right purpose, is supposed to help us into Christ's likeness. And so, in Ephesians 5, 1 through 2, um, I'll read that for us. Imitate God, therefore in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. And so, these spiritual disciplines are kind of in line with you know, we want to be imitators of Christ. We want to be followers of Christ. Not just by what we say, um, not just by what we um, say we believe, but we want to actually live it out and demonstrate it in our lives. And so, these spiritual disciplines help us to imitate Christ, to be um, doing what He's asked us to do. Um, helps us to live a life filled with love and helps us to really be follow Christ's example. Because ultimately, as Christians, we want to be the example of Christ, right? When people see us, we want to be representatives of Christ. We don't want to just be just another person, but we should, our life should bring the characteristics of Christ and um, bring that into life. And so, again, accepting Christ is the beginning of the journey? No, it's the, yeah, it's the beginning of the journey, sorry. It is the beginning of the journey. And um, these disciplines help us and push us along that journey. It helps us to grow spiritually. It helps us go from spiritual babies to spiritual maturity. Right? So, as we walk in Christ, we don't want to be spiritual babies from now and when we're 50. We don't want to still be spiritual babies. We want to be growing. We want to be able to feed ourselves. We want to be able to, um, when we read our scripture, that's what we want to be able to teach ourselves. Right? We don't want to just have to be fed all the time. Right? We don't want to eat baby food. Eventually, you want to move on to tastier, like, solid foods, like hamburgers or steaks. Right? We don't want to be eating bushed up vegetables for the rest of our lives. So, um, the first thing I want to emphasize before I go into the spiritual discipline we're going to talk about today is why we are practicing spiritual disciplines. And I already kind of hinted upon it, but um, why are we supposed to do these spiritual disciplines? I already mentioned it, so I hope you guys know. Why are we supposed to do these spiritual disciplines? Or what is the purpose of spiritual disciplines? Does anyone know? Say that one more time. Yeah, to be imitators of Christ, to be more, um, yeah, to be conformed by Christ, to be uh, molded by Christ. And so, um, the purpose is for the purpose of godliness. And so, this is kind of a thing I want to be talking about throughout today. We're supposed to do these things for the purpose of godliness. We're supposed to do spiritual practices for the purpose of godliness. So, keep that in mind. Um, if we're not doing these practices for the purpose of becoming more like Christ, becoming more godly, um, then we're kind of wasting our time doing their spiritual practices because um, it actually commands us in 1 Timothy 4, 7, discipline yourselves for the purpose of godliness, right? So we need to be continually doing these disciplines, discipling ourselves, disciplining ourselves for the purpose of godliness, not for, um, not for other reasons. And we want to do these things because we want to be like Christ. We want to be imitators of Him. And so I hope you guys don't think of this as like a checklist of things that I'm giving you guys to do, but rather think of it as an opportunity to 
really um, come after the heart of God, chase after the heart of God, and, um, and to really um, get to know God better. And so, when it comes to change, and what makes spiritual disciplines unique is, there's three ways God generally um, changes us, conforms us, and helps mold us. And so, into Christ-likeness. And so the first is, the Lord, or God, uses people to change us. And so it could be from friends, parents, teachers, pastors, or whoever. Um, people in our lives influence in a really big way. It affects how we think, it affects what we believe, it affects um, you know, what we do a lot of times. And so the, God can use people to change us. So the second, the Lord uses circumstances to change us. Events in our life happen, right? Um, whether good or bad, they leave a lasting impact on us. Um, and so that changes us, changes our beliefs, changes how we think. And so God uses circumstances. The third, God uses the spiritual disciplines to ch shape our lives, to change us. And the one unique thing about spiritual disciplines is the first two, people and circumstances, those are changes from outside in. So it's external forces that press upon us, that change us. But spiritual disciplines is something that we decide to do, and so it changes from inside out. And so that's what makes spiritual disciplines important. Because also, as we get changed from inside in, we have to make that choice to say, yes, I want to be changed from the inside out, not just from the outside in. Um, and so, again, that's the daily battle of, um, for example, the spiritual discipline of reading the Bible. We can choose to practice that spiritual discipline of reading scripture, or we can choose not to. And so a lot of this is in our self-control. Oftentimes, we can't, we can't choose who our parents are, we can't choose who our teachers are, we can't choose, um, we can't necessarily choose who our classmates are. Of course, we can choose our friends to a degree, um, and circumstances, we can't really choose what happens in our lives. But this is where we have an area of control, and so I think we're kind of responsible for this area in our lives. And so spiritual disciplines are a way we can intentionally or purposefully place us in a path of God's grace to seek Him. And so as we practice these spiritual disciplines, we're placing our hearts in an area, in a way, that is postured towards God. And we're saying, as we practice these, Lord, I'm ready, I'm willing to listen, I'm willing to obey. And so these spiritual help, disciplines help us. Because if we're not in that place, if we're not practicing these disciplines, we're kind of not placing in our, our hearts in a posture. And it's very easy for our hearts to become hardened. And when our hearts become hardened, it's very hard for God to change, and we are very resistant to change. But if we're practicing these spiritual disciplines, it's, um, we're softening our hearts. We're putting it in a place where it's soft, and God can really come in, change us from the inside out. And so, um, and so, why another reason, last reason why spiritual disciplines are so important, it's because discipline is the price of freedom. And so, I, I guess the best way I can explain this is, as an athlete, or I'm not an athlete, but for example, let's say there's an athlete who wants to be a superstar athlete. Um, what do they have to do regularly? What do they have to do, guys? Train, Train practice. What else? Is it just practicing? <clears throat> they have to eat well, right? They have to exercise. They have to eat well. They probably have to have a good schedule, like sleeping schedule, right? It's, it, it's all-encompassing. Um, if they don't discipline themselves, they're not going to win races, right? They're going to... Then they're not going to be able to run as fast as they want. They're not. They don't have the freedom to um, perform that they want because they're limited by their ability. In the same way, as we practice these self disciplines, um, we have the freedom in Christ to really obey to the fullest extent that um, He's called us to obey. Because if we don't really know Christ's will, if we don't know God's will in our lives, it's really hard to obey fully, obey um, with freedom. And so. All right, so what are we going to be talking about today, specifically? What spiritual discipline? Um, we're going to be talking about fasting, okay? So, um, fasting, yes. Okay, why? So, so why do you guys, so what do you guys think about fasting? Why do you guys have such a, like, reaction? What is the first thing that comes to your mind when you guys think about fasting? Yes, food. Lack of food. So, raise your hands, please. I can't, yes. Lack of So, lack of food, giving up food. What else? Do you guys have any other ideas of what fasting is? Death? You fast for too long, you die. Uh, yeah, Brent. We don't want to fast till we die, but you don't live to eat what you want. Okay, where so you want. so generally, when we think about fasting, it's about giving up food, right? We're like, oh, I have to give up 
a meal or I have to give up maybe a specific food. Um, I think fasting is a very good topic to talk about right now because um, it's something I think in our day and age that we don't really do or practice that often. How many of you guys have fasted before? Like two hours. Okay. <laughs> two hours. I don't know, like, were you fasting for the purpose of godliness or were you just in between meals? <laughs> just the in between meals, that does, that's not fasting. From breakfast to lunch, that three hours, I'm just not, I'm fasting during this time. That just, you're not hungry, so you're not eating during that time. Um, but besides that, besides in between meals, how many of you guys have fasted before? For the purpose of godliness. Okay, we have a couple, well, couple uh, of... I just got punished in between Okay, that's not fasting. <laughs> that's being punished. That's not fasting. So, okay, fasting is for the purpose of godliness, okay? And so, keep that in mind. It's not when you're being punished, it's not... In between meals, it's not when you intentionally skip a meal, so you're like, I'm kind of hungry. I should have eaten breakfast today. That's not fasting, okay? Um, so before we look at what fasting is, I think it's actually easier to look at what fasting is not. So if you guys have your Bibles, and if you guys turn to Matthew 6, 16 through 18. Matthew 6, 16 through 18. And I want you guys to read it since it's only a couple of verses. As one body... Okay. I see a lot of the guys don't have their Bibles. <laughs> oh my you guys can share it, but um, Matthew 6, 16 through 18. And I want you guys to read it, okay? I'm not going to read it. I hope you guys have the same versions, but uh, Matthew 6, 16 through 18. And I mean, it's okay. Okay, uh, I guess it's up here. This is the NIV version. So can you guys all read it together? When you fast, you do But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. Why were they fasting? 
get compliments. They wanted the praise of other people. They wanted the praises of the people around them. And so that's the reason they're doing it. Because they want to look spiritual. They want to look godly. They want to look like they're suffering for God. Um, and so I think Jesus is really addressing that point. Like We want to make sure we fast for the right reasons. And when we fast, we want to do it right. We don't want to do it incorrectly. Um, and I remember when I did a fast in high school, uh, I did a horrible job. I'll just say that straight out. I did a horrible job. Um, I didn't really understand what the purpose of fasting was. I thought it was just like spiritual hunger, just being hungry for God. And so I was just like, oh, I'm so hungry. And then I'm like, oh my, I'm fasting, so I can't eat. And then I would just like tell people, right? And then, <laughs> so I was doing pretty much what it says not to do here, right? And so I was just like, and so I wasn't really doing it to know God more. I wasn't really doing it for the purpose of being like Christ more. Um, and I was kind of just doing it because I thought that was like the right thing to do. As a good Christian, that's what we're supposed to do. And so I didn't have the right heart. I didn't have the right intention. Um, so what is fasting exactly? It's Well, the technical term is it's a voluntary abstinence from food for spiritual persons. Pur not persons. Purposes. Um, to rephrase it, it's a willingly giving up food for the, for spiritual purposes. Now, I think um, back in the Bible, if we look in the Bible, it's almost always food. Uh, they always give up food um, and water for fasting purposes. But I don't think fasting necessarily has to be just food. It can be um, from other things. Some things that I often fast from is internet, media, um, cell phone use, just stuff like that. Sometimes it, sometimes it is food, but most of the time it's just in my, stuff in my life that kind of distract me, that prevent me from focusing on God, prevent me from really um, coming to Christ with the undivided heart and undivided attention. Um, and this is actually a good time to talk about fasting, because do you guys know what this period before Easter is called right now? Um, Holy Week. Lent. No. Lent, right? Yeah. Lent. So, um, usually a lot of Catholics, and I know some evangelical groups also uh, practice Lent, and so they usually give up something for Lent. Um, and so, in a way, since they're fasting. But I think it's important, as important as when we give up something, we need to replace it with something else. Because if we give up, let's say we give up food, um, we're going to replace that meal time with something else if we're not, we don't have a purpose of why we're fasting. Um, if we are just fasting for the sake of fasting, and the meal time, and we're not doing it for the purpose of godliness, we're just going to, I don't know, distract ourselves with our cell phone or know, TV shows while we eat or something, right? We're not going to be doing it for the purpose of godliness. And so, um, I think it's important when we fast, we replace it with something that's um, glorifying to God. And so, oftentimes when people fast food, during the meal times, they tend to pray more or um, they read the scripture more and they dedicate that extra time to God. And so, that's one example of how we can fast um, for the purpose of godliness. And so, again, if we look, Jesus is saying, don't be like the Pharisees where you um, show others that you're fasting. Rather, what does he say? What does he say, guys? Can someone read verse 17 for me? But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face. Okay, so that sounds, seems kind of weird for our day and age. What do you mean by put oil on our head and wash our face? Basically, it just do it in secret. Don't change your normal routine. Um, if you're fasting, don't get up in the morning and be like, okay, I'm not going to shower today because I want people to know I'm suffering. Just go about your day normally, right? If you're going to fast, just wash your face, brush your teeth, um, do the things that you would do normally. Um, and don't make it obvious to others that you're fasting, right? Don't make it obvious to others you're fasting. Unless we're fasting as a community, which we're going to be doing later this week. But if you're just doing it individually by yourself, don't do it, don't, don't tell other people to get that recognition, right? Do it in secret. And what does it say? When we do it in secret, um, you know, although other people might not see, God sees and God knows what we're doing, right? And He knows that if we have the right heart, He knows that we're doing it for Him. We're doing it for spiritual purposes, and um, He will reward us. Uh, and so, you know, who fasted in the Bible? I think these are kind of interesting people to look at, and I would encourage you guys to look in the Bible to see who fasted. So. Moses fasted um, before he got the Ten Commandments. He was on the mountain for 40 days, 40 nights. 
And if you guys think about it, it's actually kind of a miracle that he survived up there without food or water. Because we can we can last without food for a bit, but without water, we die very quickly. But um, he fasted in Deuteronomy 9, 9 through 18. He fasted on the mountain. Uh, Daniel. How many of you guys have heard of a Daniel fast? No, okay. So a Daniel fast is basically, you know, what did Daniel do during the time where he was brought into Babylon and then... What did he do? Vegetables instead of the rich meat and stuff. Yeah, so he just ate vegetables and water instead of um, eating the meat and wine. Why? Because he didn't. He wanted to um, honor God because he knew where the meat came from. He knew where the wine was from. He wanted to honor God in that way. And he wanted to <coughs> please him to God. And so he fasted for the purpose of godliness because he didn't want to um, disrespect God and he didn't want to make his body unclean by um, eating the food that was provided, usually from, that came from the temples or came from as sacrifices. Um, you know, Esther fasted for the safety of the Jews in the book of Esther. And Jesus, actually, the very first thing he did before he started his ministry was he fasted for 40 days and 40 nights in the desert. And he was tempted there. And so, with all these examples, um, and all the other examples of fasting in the Bible, it's done for a purpose. They don't just fast for no reason. It's, it's done for a purpose. Because if they don't have a purpose again, um, we're just going to be wandering aimlessly without a point, and fasting is going to be a lot harder too without a purpose, because we want to be like, why am I even doing this? But with a purpose and a goal, it becomes easier to fast, and it gives us a reason why we're fasting. Um, and so, a couple of reasons why we can fast in our daily lives, it helps strengthen prayer, our prayers. Um, if we want to strengthen our prayers, fasting is a great way um, to, to strengthen our prayers in terms of not that he will listen more necessarily, but we can pray in ways when we're really physically hungry, but um, if we can translate that to you know spiritual hunger too, we, we're able to pray better. Um, if we want to seek God's guidance, to express grief, to seek deliverance or protection, to express repentance and a, the return to God, to humble oneself before God, to dedicate um, oneself to God, to express our love and worship before God. And this is a, um, a short list of why we should fast, and reasons and purposes of why we should fast. And so, um, a personal example of fasting, uh, last semester I did a fast for, well, I did two different fasts, but the first fast I did was from less than four weeks, and it was actually four class, so we had to do it. And so, well, we could do any spiritual discipline, but I chose fasting because um, I want to get better at it. And so what I gave up was soda and just sugary drinks in general. And so you might think, how can I give up sugary drinks and soda for the purpose of godliness? Um, well, um, in, in place of giving up sugary drinks, I also placed notes around my home where when I saw it, I would pause and just think about God and be in His presence just for 30 seconds to a minute. Something simple. And so I kind of replaced, that's kind of what I did in for with uh, just not drinking sugary drinks and um, sodas. And do you know what I learned during that four weeks? I learned that uh, I think about sugary drinks and sodas way more than I think about God. Um, I think about God during my QTs, but throughout the day, during my four weeks, I was like, man, I really, driving, I'm like, oh, I really wish I had a soda right now. Or, you know, I'm eating, oh, I really wish I had a soda right now. Or I'm eating dinner or a hamburger, I'm like, oh, I really wish I had a soda right now. A couple weeks in, I'm like, Man, soda sounds so good right now. I haven't had one in two weeks. Oh man, wow. milkshake sounds fantastic right now. I haven't had one of those in a couple. And so I, I was kept on thinking about sugary drinks, and then I'm like, wait, how many times do I think about God in this way? Do I think about God consistently? Is He constantly popping into my mind? And then I realized, and I had to seriously analyze. I was like, no. Like to be honest with myself, I've been thinking about sodas these past couple of weeks way more than I've been thinking about God, um, even with the sticky notes around in my house. And so, um, I think so. fasting really reveals kind of what is in control of our lives and what is, um, what are the <coughs> desires of our hearts. Um, and I know it's kind of silly to say, oh, soda is the desire of my heart. But in a way, it was taking my mind, it was taking my thoughts away from God. And so, um, um, and so I, I, I had to do a lot of self-reflection during that period. 
where I was like, am I, if I am not thinking about God on a daily basis, on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, not just morning and evening, but am I thinking about it throughout the day? And if I'm not, then am I really living a life that's glorifying to God? Am I really um, depending on God throughout the day for His purposes, for His will? Or am I kind of just saying it with my mouth, saying, oh, Lord, I want to glorify you and do what you want me to do, but throughout the day, I'm just really not doing what He wants me to do. And being honest with myself, I had to come to the conclusion, I don't think I'm really living a life that's that pleasing to God in terms of giving everything that I have, my moment, my time, right? Not just my QT times, but just throughout the day, and just reflecting on God, and just on His presence, being in His presence. And so, I would encourage you guys to really think about, um, well, we're going to be fasting as a community this week, this Friday, but um, just in general, in the future, I would encourage you guys, if the Holy Spirit tells you guys to fast, you guys would listen, but um, just some food for thought. You know, what in our lives cause us to not really focus on God? And, um, and fasting from that is a really good way to see if it's really controlling our lives or not. If, if we're even go one day without like media, internet type stuff, and we're suffering so much that we know that that's kind of taken a place, a strong place in our lives that it's, we might have a really hard time letting go. And so it's a good practice to really think about. And also, uh, I think when we fast, we kind of enter a voluntary, voluntary period of suffering, and especially with food. Um, we enter a voluntary period of suffering. And um, what do we turn to during those times of suffering? Um, oftentimes, I think when we suffer, we turn to stuff that will distract our minds away from things like TV shows, games, movies, um, friends, or just keeping ourselves busy. And I think um, fasting really shows what our in natural inclination, our natural desire is to do. Um, I think for me, if I went hungry, my natural inclination would be to um, just watch TV to keep my mind, not numb my mind from the, the pain of hunger. But hopefully as we practice fasting, and specifically if we practice food fasting, um, we can train ourselves, train our bodies to, uh, when we're suffering, to really turn towards God, turn to, towards Christ. Because if we can't do that during the time we're voluntarily suffering, during the times where circumstances cause us to suffer, we're not going to turn to God. I can almost guarantee we will not turn to God directly, right away. Our, at least as our first response. We're going to turn to um, what comforts us, which is usually, I don't know, I think for a lot of guys, video games, TV shows, girls, TV shows, and I don't know. K-pop. <laughs> I think that's a kind of stereotype, but maybe K-pop. But um, we're going to naturally just turn to those things. If we're not disciplining our bodies to really focus on God, focus on Christ, during these suffering periods. And so, um, that's kind of my encouragement for you guys to really just think about this week of, you know, how can I, um, you know, what areas in my life are taking away from glorifying God? What's distracting me? What's taking an inproportionate amount of time in my life? Um, and what is something that I think I can physically not live without? And then I think that's a good place to start fasting in terms of if you're spending a lot of time on the TV, it might be a good place to start. Just at least, even if it's just one day, um, you know, taking a break from TV and focusing on um, reading your scripture more, praying more, or just you know, resting in His presence more. Um, so, I hope you guys would prayerfully consider that this week. Um, and also, we're fasting together as a community this Friday. So, if you guys would love to join us, uh, we would love to have you. We'll be hungry together. We'll suffer together. Hopefully we won't be, you know, too cranky at each other, but um, that's kind of the purpose, okay? And so, so yeah, I'll close this in prayer.